All right, let's turn it over to Mika, who's on Teams right now. Hi, how's it going? Hey, there you are. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. Excited to be here. All right, let's hear your talk about supercharging productivity with Roslyn and AI. Okay, let's do it. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Mika Duma. I'm a program manager on the .NET team, and today I'm gonna talk about supercharging your .NET productivity with Roslyn and AI. Uh, so usually these talks are filled with tons of tips and tricks, uh, tons of demos, so brace yourselves. And um, here is just the agenda today. I'm going to talk about some code fixes and refactorings, uh, browse on analyzers, editor config, .NET format, source generators, and telecode AI, uh, and the new Razor editor. Just a general shout out, uh, Visual Studio 2022 is out. Uh, that is what I'm going to be using for this entire demo. And you can go ahead and download it at aka.ms forward slash VS 2022. Okay, let's do this, demo time. <laughs> so Visual Studio provides hints, uh, you know, to help you maintain and modify your code in the form of code fixes and refactorings. And these appear as light bulbs and screwdrivers next to your coder in the margin. Uh, the hints can help you resolve warnings and errors, um, as well as provide suggestions. For example, here I'm getting a suggestion to use a new C Sharp 10 language feature, which is converting this namespace to a file scope namespace. Uh, this will go ahead and unnest the class definition. Uh, which gets rid of that unnecessary indentation, which ultimately creates more space for your code. Uh, here I have a suggested code fix helping me resolve this warning by declaring this type as nullable. So this stars class, it doesn't have a constructor, so it's warning me to declare this as nullable since I never instantiated it. So adding uh, this question mark here will give warnings everywhere I'm using this saying, hey, maybe you need a null check or two, just maybe. Um, one thing that you might have noticed when I was talking about uh, namespaces is this refactoring to change a namespace to match a folder structure. So we've had this refactoring for a bit, but we now allow you to apply it to your entire project or solution through the light bulb. Uh, that means if I head over to Solution Explorer and I right click on a project or a solution name within Solution Explorer, I can go ahead and sync my namespaces from here. Ta-da. <laughs> um, another refactoring that we have within Solution Explorer is remove unused references. So this was a huge deal when we added it. Uh, we now allow you to remove, we let you know about different project references or NuGet packages that have no usage. So I can go ahead and apply this. And yes, I would like to continue and remove those. Cool. So, Code fixes and refactorings are powered by Roslyn analyzers, and Roslyn is the code name for the C Sharp and the Visual Basic compiler. But it's not just your ordinary compiler, it's a set of open source APIs so that anyone can write uh, their own tools and use it, even you. So if you're inspired by these productivity features and you want to add your own code analysis tools, you can go ahead and write a analyzer and ship it as a NuGet package. Uh, for example, the .NET 6 SDK has a lot of analyzers included by default uh, that a bunch of us on the .NET team wrote, so you automatically get guidance on best practices when creating .NET applications. You can view all of these analyzers in an editor config, and an editor config is a single file that helps you maintain a consistent code by defining coding conventions. It can uh, live with your code in its repository and use the same source control. Uh, this way, the coding convention guidance is the same for everyone on your team who clones from that repo. And so with editor config, you can enable or disable individual analyzers, and you can also configure the severity to which you want each analyzer enforced. For example, uh, one of the newer analyzers that we added is allowing you to simplify new expressions. So this is a fairly new language feature. You don't have to repeat the type anymore. It's on the left. So repeating it on the right uh, duplicates information needlessly. Um, and currently, I have these three dots having the analyzer appear as a suggestion. So I can go ahead and bump up the severity of this uh, with my editor config, or I can do it through the light bulb. And so notice that 
see. Notice in the editor and in the error list, the severity has been promoted to a warning, making the violation more obvious. This will automatically update my editor config, so everyone using this repo will get a warning when new expressions aren't simplified um, and can potentially cause some code style wars. I don't know. Um, so I can go ahead and apply this uh, you know, code fix through the light bulb, um, or I can use a new uh, command in town that we added to uh, .NET 6 called .NET format. So I can go ahead and run .NET format in the command line. And uh, this will go ahead and apply all the coding convention preferences that were set in my editor config across my entire project and solution all in one go. So let's wait for that to work. Oops. Yes, I would like to. OK, so notice over here that the um, new expression has now been simplified. In addition to analyzing code, you can also use Roslyn to generate code. Uh, several helpful source generators are now included um, in the .NET 6 SDK to help you write efficient code. I'll demonstrate one that helps with JSON. So over here, I have this astronomer record. And this is just storing information about astronomer. And I want to go ahead and serialize this object to a JSON string. So doing this can be, you know, pretty tedious, pretty error prone. But luckily, source generators will generate all that code for me instantaneously. So you might be wondering how. Uh, that sounds pretty magical. Well, it is magic. No. Um, so pretty much this uh, JSON serializable attribute tells the source generator to generate source code to help serialize this type. So if I go ahead and click on the dependencies node within Solution Explorer underneath Analyzers, and then the System Text JSON, click here, um, you can see all the code that the System Text JSON source generator creates. Um, and you can see all of uh, my properties being handled for me for my astronomer record. Um, this is, I don't know, over 150 lines of code that I uh, luckily did not have to write myself. Um, so I can just really use that JSON serializable attribute and the source generator will write all that code for me. Um, most importantly, the source generated code is the most performant way to serialize a type to a JSON string because you know we're all about that performance. And uh, what's really cool is that I can also easily navigate um, to a source generated file. So all of our navigation features work too for this. Cool, cool, cool. So Rawson also has um, an API for completion providers. So anyone can write their own custom completions that show up in the IntelliSense list. For example, one of our community uh, contributors wrote this one, which is IntelliSense completion or um, overloaded operators. So notice how we now get options for operators. We also have a filter for it. It's pretty cool. Uh, we also have completion for indexers. So if I select this, it actually adds the square brackets and erases the dot. Um, so it recognizes that this call that I'm doing on a type and lists it in the completion list, whereas before it might not have been accessible because I already typed a dot. So this is cool, but you know we always try to take it a step further with completion. And one of the things that I'm really excited about is whole line completion. So instead of just completing the word, we will now complete the entire line. Uh, this is a combination of Roslyn scanning through the local variables, the overloads that I might be using for this call, uh, or the type that I'm initializing, and IntelliCode, which is an AI model that uses uh, machine learning to predict code completions. So whole line completion is available in Visual Studio 2022. Uh, you can configure, disable, or enable it by selecting that little light bulb icon over there. Um, and yeah, it's really cool, so definitely check it out. Um, I do want to point out this small 
little thing. So notice how I don't have a semicolon at the end and my cursor is placed um, next to this comma. If I go ahead and type a semicolon, we're smart enough to know that you wanted to add that to the end and we place your cursor there. So we are getting smarter. <laughs> IntelliCode can also suggest edits to assist you while you make similar changes in multiple places in your code. Uh, so here I have this struct light year that I haven't implemented yet. And instead of throwing a generic exception, I want to throw a not implemented exception. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that manually. And Notice how IntelliCode is suggesting that I apply the same edits to 15 other locations. Pretty cool. Um, of course, I could have done this with the find and replace window, but I really like how IntelliCode offers me this suggestion organically, and I don't have to mess with any regex, so it's pretty cool. Um, so that was a simple fix, but let's look at something a bit more complex. So let's say I want to make multiple edits on one line and apply those edits um, to the rest of my document. So this parameter I'm using in this struct overload are inconsistent. Right now they're X and Y, and I want to go ahead and change them to A and B to match the other overloads. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And aha, IntelliCode does it again. So it's now offering me uh, suggested edits. It's detecting the multiple changes on the single line. It's offering me to make those multiple changes to the rest of my document. Cool. So I'm already pretty impressed, but in case you're not, IntelliCode can also detect refactorings that are available while you make manual code changes and offers to apply those refactorings um, in your workflow. So let's see. Here, let's say I want to go ahead and add a constructor to this class. Notice how IntelliCode is offering me to generate a constructor. So it knew that's exactly what I was trying to do. And all I have to do is press tab, and it's easy as that. And let's say I go ahead and add another property here. Um, one thing I actually want to show is if I, this is a new command, it's called smart break line. So if I type shift enter, it will just place my cursor on the next line. So check it out. And here I see I'm getting a warning. Um, so I have this diagnostic squiggle. So if I press control dot, I can see I get a suggested fix to remove extra blank lines. Yes, please. Um, okay. And then let's say I want to go ahead and pass that. Notice how uh, IntelliCode offers to add this parameter to uh, my constructor. So that was IntelliCode being extremely intelligent. Um, honestly, a little bit intimidated by its intelligence, but I'm not going to lie, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, so in addition to everything else that Roslyn powers, we also power a bunch of navigation and code exploration tools. So in the margin here, you might notice this glyph. This is inheritance margin. And so this is on by default in Visual Studio 2022, and this helps you navigate the inheritance chain. So here, if I click on this, I can see that my planet class has a bunch of derived types. And so I can just click on Jupiter. And if I click here, I can see that Jupiter has a default planet and planet as its base types, and it's implementing the interface gas giant. And then I can click that and navigate to gas giant. And I can see that gas giant has a bunch of implementing types. So inheritance margin just makes it a lot easier for you to go up and down and um, you know inspect the inheritance chain. Cool. Visual Studio also provides um, inline uh, parameter and inline type hints. And so I can go ahead and access these by pressing Alt F1. And you can see I get these adornments in my editor, which is so cool. So I can see um, I can see all my parameter hints for date time where I'm calling it. I have a year, a month, a day. It's just really, really awesome. And if you want, you can go ahead and display these. And it 
enable them so you have them displayed all the time by going to Tools, Options, Text Editor. We have it for both Visual Basic and C Sharp. And I can just scroll all the way down. And here I can display them. And I also have a bunch of different configuration options, so I can choose what I want displayed as well. And it will now just be displayed in my editor. And if we scroll up, you know, to my simplified new expressions, I get my types back. So it's pretty magical, pretty cool. Um, over here, you also might notice that I have this underline. Uh, this underline represents variables, which I um, reassign variables. Uh, so I have this turned on in tools options. And so this underline is pretty much letting me know that this value is being written to multiple times in this method. And so um, I can also use the new value tracking feature to see details for how this value is being changed. Value tracking uh, is available in the right click menu. If I right click on a member and then I can just select the track value source command which will open the value tracking window where I can go ahead and just analyze uh, how this value is being changed throughout my code. Um, all right, so hopefully you're pretty familiar with Roslyn and how it powers a bunch of our .NET productivity tools. Next, I wanna talk about the new Razor editor. So we have been working for some time on a new Razor editor for ASP.NET Core projects. And the new Razor editor uses uh, the language server protocol, which is also known as LSP. And the LSP model opens up the door for us to add more C-sharp editing features to Razor and enables other new Razor specific productivity improvements. Uh, for example, uh, we now have rename here. So I can go ahead and let's say rename this to star. And notice, um, so that's available too. Oops. Let's see. Let's mm -hmm. so do that maybe. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so let's say I F12, I can also navigate to the Razor editor. Well, no, I have to close that. One second. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we have a bunch of new refactorings as well that we added. So if I go into here, I just want to try this again. And I navigate by pressing F12. Okay, I don't know. It's the demo gods are just not with me, I guess today. Okay, fine. Um, so uh, yeah, so we have refactorings that we added recently. And um, also if I go ahead and let's say, delete this using directive, that uh, we also have um, our most used code fix, which is add missing using directives. Um, I will get this uh, error and I can go ahead and apply the fix to add the missing using directive. It's pretty cool. And then you can see it was added here and I no longer have an error. Uh, we also added uh, item filtering in the completion list. So here you can see we have all of these new filters which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so we added item filtering to the completion list as well. Oops, let's see. Yeah, um, so that is what's new with uh, the Razor editor. You also might notice that um, the Razor syntax highlighting has also been updated. Um, so this improves contrast, general look and feel, and usability. Uh, for example, you might notice that the C sharp uh, background highlighting has been removed. So this updates, makes it more clear. And uh, when something has been selected or highlighted, uh, we also have um, updated colorization options and tools, options, fonts, and colors. So if I go over to here and scroll down to Reza, um, you know, these options are now more descriptive and more customizable. Pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, so that was, um, yeah, so that was uh, the new Razor editor. We plan to add uh, tons of new productivity features to it. 
in future releases. Uh, so please do give the new Razor editor a try and let us know what you think. Um, there are a bunch of things that we're still um, implementing and fixing with performance and reliability. And uh, we hope to get that out in the next release or two. Okay. So uh, here is just a general resources slide. Um, so Roslyn is open source. So if you do want to add your own uh, productivity features, um, or if you want us to implement one for you, please do visit uh, our open source repo on GitHub. Uh, same with Razor, we are also open source. Uh, you can check out our roadmap for all the things that we're going to be uh, fixing and implementing in the next release. Um, also download Visual Studio 2022 at ak.ms forward slash VS 2022. Uh, we had our launch yesterday. You can watch all those videos at uh, the VS launch link as well. And you can learn about all the latest uh, features in there. Um, as always, please do provide feedback through the send feedback tool in Visual Studio. We would really love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. No, not. Thank you very much, Mika, for uh, working on that. Jamie's taking a lunch break, and I'll get my. They're like, you know what? They're having a good week. Let's. For now, um, if you're still around, Mika, well, I've got a couple of questions here from the folks on Twitter who are um, tweeting us at hashtag .net conf. Is that cool with you? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here's a great one from Karen who says, .NET Comp, we got some IntelliCode. IntelliCode is a kind of an online service. Do I have to be connected to the internet? Could you maybe juxtapose the, the offline training and the offline usage of that model vis-a-vis uh, -vis the privacy concerns about uploading code to strange services in the cloud? Yeah, um, so yeah, we do take privacy, uh, privacy very seriously. So uh, yeah, so you don't have to worry about um, that at all. Um, I think I'm not sure about doing it offline, but you could definitely tweet at me and I can ask uh, the IntelliCode PM about that and get back to you. Right, so as I understand it, uh, that work it can happen entirely offline. You can actually use IntelliCode in airplane mode because the models are private to you, you know, and they are, uh, the ones on your code are trained locally, and the ones in the cloud are trained on public code on GitHub. So we can double check on that with the with the PM who owns that. And uh, but that's how I understand it. And I, I think you're absolutely yeah. right because I know I've used IntelliCode in airplane mode before, and uh, they're they're absolutely not shuttling your personal private uh, source code off into some strange location. So that's definitely uh, important. So good question. Appreciate that. Um, here's a question that I don't know the answer to. Uh, the relationship between this person saying that they want a pair for editor config. They want a user config that shows how the code that they want. <laughs> they want a scoped editor config. So editor config, of course, lets you have the team oppress you with their braces. They want to say no, and they want a thumb war of config files such that they can decide what their standards are. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, we actually have uh, tools, options, code style settings. So that would allow you to set your code style settings uh, to your local Visual Studio. So it can be completely different from your editor config as well. Really? So that feature that this person just asked for already exists right now? Yeah, and also it depends like where your editor config lives. So if it's like a solution-based editor config, but your team is using that one, but you can actually create your own editor config that's project-based and that one will take precedence. So, wow, yeah, that is very cool. Either option. Yeah. All right. A couple more questions coming. <laughs> Here's a good idea. I'm probably sure that you, you, you solved that one problem, but I bet you can't solve this one. Can IntelliCode look into a bug ticket and autocomplete <laughs> whatever needs to be done? We're getting close, aren't we? Maybe. Yes, maybe. Maybe in the future. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't feel bad about IntelliCode. I know we're seeing things like IntelliCode and other AI based things. Uh, just because they generate the code doesn't mean that you don't have to understand what's going on, right? This is about avoiding typing, right? I only got so many keystrokes left in my hands. I want to make sure <laughs> that I'm using them as effectively as possible, but I still have to under understand what has been, uh, been written. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to overdo that. Um, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Roslyn is uh, Roslyn is ahead of its time, and now with AI, it's astonishing. Feels like we're living in the future. Nice compliment here from Marin. Thank Isn't that you. nice? That's great. And then here's a question. I don't know the answer to this, and maybe we'd have to ask somebody else. Is Visual Studio going to support GitHub Copilot at some point? Do you know anything about the plans for that? Um, we are in talks with them, so uh, 
TBD. <laughs> TBD. So in talks with our friends to figure out the right way to do that. That is so cool. Yeah. That would be pretty amazing. So yeah, I think that the possibilities are there. It's just a matter of, of having those conversations. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much. Bye. All right.